Hi, Carol here. Warm welcome to my craft room and it's Otter Day. The Otterly Lovable stamp set and dies from LDRS Creative. This is my design team project using the Otterly Lovable stamp set and the dies actually and the inks. And remember all the inks are that are from LDRS Creative are not only juicy and fantabulous but they are hybrid inks. And hybrid inks are the middle ground to a dye ink on one end of the spectrum and on the other end of the spectrum is a pigment ink. The dye ink dries quickly, the pigment ink stays longer to emboss and use powders, but the hybrid ink, you get the best of both worlds. It dries, gives you a little bit of uh, time to use embossing powders. So here I chose some purples, some blue, some yellow, a little bit of orange, uh, all kinds of goodness with the brush here. And as I was going across to get this kind of uh, northern sky, so to speak, I thought, you know what, just take the ink and do ink to paper when you get to the darker mid-tone blue. So here you can see I am using the orange and if you own hybrid inks, especially the LDRS Creative inks, you know they're vibrant and you know they're juicy and they're fun to work with. The colors are extraordinary, you know, from one orange to another orange. It is beautiful and you do get that distinction of colors. And don't you love the back of LDRS Creative dies and stamps? They color for you in case you are, you know, oh, what color is an otter? Well, turn the, the package over and it'll show you. Now, otters are freshwater lake residents. They love fresh water. So in the Canadian lakes in Canada where I live, they frequent there. But also the otter finds its home very well in the Pacific Ocean. You do get smaller marine otters there. But the majority of otters are found in freshwater lakes. And uh, so that's something. And you get them in all sorts of brown tones and grays. They are a very, uh, you know, next to the beaver, I guess, you know, with a different tail. It has a longer uh, pointed tail than a beaver does. But... It was nice to know, so I decided to do two cards. One that was more of the lake-bound otter in the scene. Actually, yes, he's skiing. <laughs> here's my ink to paper. Woohoo! yes. And here's the colors that I used. You can pick them up right in that bit of fireworks there. So, and then I decided to do an ocean scene because they do live in the Pacific Ocean. So, yeah, isn't this fun? So I decided to do A2 cards, like I said in my last tutorial. Uh, that is a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card. So I am just preparing two of them. I did not use one. I'm going to save this for another uh, card, but I did use this one. I chose which one was more of a vibrant color with the orange up in the the orange yellow up in the left hand corner and it just served a wonderful purpose for you know skiing otters I mean really and this set look at it to the left is that not cute 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 uh, make for fantabulous uh, I was gonna say fantastic of course they're fantastic children's cards but they're so cute an adult card would be nice too for grandparents or your parents or friends look at them so I took my 0 0.03 pigment ink uh, marker here it's nice and fine I'm just going over all of the outlines first because it's Copic friendly and we're going to have some fun with Copics and also with watercolors so I took an LDRS creative dye to make the hills here and LDRS, let me just say this, I did a freehand interactive card, you know, where you use the penny and the ski otters going down the hill. I just cut it out uh, without a die. But LDRS, I'm going to leave the link. They have interactive dies 
all sorts of shapes. It's wonderful. I'm actually thinking of ordering it myself because it has unusual curves and uh, sizes. It's just beautiful. So I'll leave it in the links over on my blog. I appreciate you viewing my Eldaris Creative Design Team project in the last tutorial. That was two and a half hours long. Look at this. It's only an hour long today. Oh yeah, I'm getting better, aren't I? So here we go. I'm doing two cards too. Let's keep that in mind also. Two, about five different techniques actually. And we're doing some coloring because I know some of you wonderful subscribers like to see me color and I love to color. So this worked out very well. Now, I would prefer to not have dark black lines on images that I do, but I chose to really put it super black. And here I'm cleaning it off with our ink cleaner. This is wonderful. The first go around on your photopolymer stamps, it will take it off and it's called Extreme Clean. That will also be in the link for you. I took the B01, 02, 04, and 05 to do basically most of my coloring. I did not worry about going out of the lines here, even though I am using the dyes, but uh, it's an easy combination, you know, 02 to 05. It does give you some dimension in here and also you can pick up any of your grays some warm grays would look nice if you want to add shadow to either side now this i end up putting up the some of the colors that i used but i did use the uh y i think it's the three five that i used there it was hard for me to see but i also put up that i used the y07 and the one i'm sorry the YR07, which is more orangey tone, and then a lighter orange to the yellow is the YR06. And I'm going to do the little fishies. And it's so cute because what I did, what I just, honestly, I have a huge imagination and I'll show you what I did. I stamped out four fish. I die cut two of them and I cut two of them. This is the Y02, pretty, pretty, pretty yellow. And of course, they're gonna have little winter bonnets on here, winter hats, toques, you know, they are Canadian otters, of course. And here's my little one that looks more like a Christmas toque. And we'll put the yellow and kind of like the, um, the gold, you know. I think in my golds, I'll kind of look it up here, is more of the Y35, but I couldn't see it. I'll have to look at that. Uh, but it's more of a gold tone. I am looking, I think it's the Y28, if I'm right. Um, I use it quite often. And my two reds that I use on tiny, tiny objects to get a little bit of dimension is the R35, which is the brighter, the R89, which is more of the burgundy tone. So you will get a little shadow on your mugs and uh, cute as can be. I actually did it so that the highlight was in the center. So that's kind of nice. And these little otters are going to hold a mug of hot chocolate. Of course, they're skiing. You have to have hot chocolate when you're skiing, right? And then I will go over all my images like I usually do with my pigment pen. Any Copic friendly pen would be great. Then you can go back, you know, and um, color them if you wish. But these are kind of tiny little fish. So I tried to stay in the lines as best I could because I am going to use the dyes. Oh, was I happy to get dyes. I love using dyes than to fussy cut anymore. So that was great. Thank you very much for sending me the dyes that go with this set. Now I'm probably here taking out a gray, a nice, uh, any gray family will do because you're putting it over top of the blue it isn't going to make a huge difference and I'm die cutting it so I am going to get the edges of the gray as well and this little otter is going to be gray so I took out some gray hues and like I told you I think before is the it's going to be so the Sun is straight on so you're getting that highlight in the center that's an easy peasy way to go so you don't have to direct yourself 
whether the light is coming from the left or coming from the right, you know, I just, uh, when I don't want to think too much, <laughs> I have the light in the center. So I just know that everything is going to be light towards the center. And that's an easy way to color. I'm adding some little strokes in it to, so the little otter can have some separate little hairs there. And then I'll probably put white gel pen. Of course, my Signo white broad pen comes out for the eyes and also for his little whiskers. He's a cutie. Then I'm going to add my pigment marker, which I get at the stationery store. Uh, they're affordable and you can get a package of four of them for doing things like this. Okay, I'm trying to see how I did the marks like that. Just to the side, nothing spectacular. And I got a nice black image on, I'm so glad you're my significant otter and I'd be utterly lost without you. So I'm not sure what I, I think I used both of these. And yeah, you can see the difference it does make when you do add a pigment liner. Uh, to darken up your edges. You are not doing no line coloring here, that's for sure. But what this does, if you go out of the lines in your coloring, you can thicken up your lines if you don't feel that the zero marker is going to pull it out. Or you can use your Signal Broad and go over it. And it's not really going to hurt the image doing that because you just have a little bit of a line of the white cardstock when you do die cut. Well, let's just move on with our little otters. I know I'm going to add some blue to the gray to just accentuate the richness of a light gray. And generally I do add blues. I don't know, sometimes I add a light purple either or, yeah, it is the blue. Uh, it's so pretty to just have that come through. I use purple and blue when I'm doing hair. When you do raven black hair, it's nice to highlight with the light gray, but add some purple and blue throughout it. And honestly, it does make a big difference. So let's design our little toques. And we're going to have these for our otters. And look at that. I get to use my tape. This is my Beatty's Basics tape dispenser. I love it. Look at Woohoo. And instead of using those two tape um, you know, rolls, I can use this and I'm telling you it does not rip the paper. I love that scotch tape and it's going to come in handy for gifting as well. So here we go. I'm going to run this through my die cutter and then bring it back. And you know when that little otter that you see upper left that's going down the ski hill, I am taking out some, I think it's point Two, two gauge wire some really soft wire and I'm going to make him some skiing glasses yes with acetate plastic with his little eyes looking through these little details always make a card don't they just adding a little this and a little that well I do hope you're having a wonderful day today I certainly am enjoying the voiceover and look at this have I not gotten a lot of use look at me <laughs> Can I make it any harder by flipping my arm across the ruler, across my other arm? Oh yes, I don't know what I'm doing, but it's working for me. And I'm just trying to put this, I thought I otter. Uh, I can't, isn't that something that I can't read it? But I'd be utterly lost without you maybe? Can't think and look at that at the same time. So what are we gonna do here? Let us start painting, of course. Now I add water. I do enjoy um, using water brushes. I actually, on this one, I do squeeze the water out. Sometimes I do have a little jar or something with water in it, but I chose to just fill up or change out my uh, paint brush with the, my water brush. So I am mixing this up. I will leave all the products that I'm using on here. And this has three or four tins to this set of uh, paints. 
and I like it because I don't like to use direct color. There it is. Oh, I'm trying to hone in. Uh, and it always works out really nice to start your bottom layer with adding water to the actual image because the paint will not go beyond where the water is laying. So that's nice to know. And like I said, you can see here, my light source is in the center directly onto the image. Keep a paper towel near you and you can pretty well do anything. I'm adding yellows, blues, purples, all kinds of neat colors that you could sop it up if you don't like it. Go back and change it up, but experiment. Just experiment. Go from a deep chocolate brown to the cocoa brown. Uh, add some pinks. That's the beauty of coloring, my friends, especially water coloring. When you put the water base down, you can always put a little corner of your paper towel in and let it suck it out and start again. And I love that. Um, the presentation is going just because they're animals. You're not seeking perfection here. Like you were doing skin tones, you know, that took a little bit more thought. And now I'm going to add some direct water to get that water. I went out of the lines. How easy peasy is that? Just add water and tap it and it's gone. I had, I really have fun coloring. I have to do it more often and when I get into my Christmas cards here, probably in a week, I'll start that. I'm going to finish up. Now I wanted to show you something. I have been teaching Hunter, my five-year-old grandson, how to mix color and he loves to paint with me. He loves it and we took time to, for me to just show him using, well, some of his primary colors, but how to make other colors from colors. And he is having so much fun. I had to keep it in the edit and show him that he's in Nan's video. Look at that. Now, he has this big tree by his house. And beside that, they're building another house. So they have a ginormous uh, sand, or excuse me, pile of dirt and that's what he's putting there his ginormous pile of dirt as he envisions the side of his house what it looks like he has lots of trees uh, on his property and oh there he is oh yeah look at that and he is thinking up this is his fourth picture we just sat and did mixing color mixes so he could get the feel of the brush the feel that you don't have to have watch this on the sun he mixes his colors up on the palette and uh, he's been coloring for a good hour just learning to you know what does it take to make a green what colors do you have to use to make orange uh, and he's taking to it he just has so much fun I mean every time he comes over he wants to paint that's a good thing there's all his paints right there when he was learning so I'm so thankful to be able to share with you what uh, my grandson is learning through coloring and uh, mixing colors and painting actually he loves to paint so thank you for sharing that with me we're going to have a little bit of a snowfall because we're making an igloo now this igloo is hysterical i made three of them i did three different ways of making ice to look like ice now, the last way I did it, I did not want the lines to be prominent, the black lines, because you want them to be more white and gray because it is snow. And I am making it so that the sun is still gonna be centered. And you'll see that. I do add white to the mix. Inside the igloo, you know it's going to be darker because because no, uh, sunlight is going to hit it so whatever on the inside just make it darker and then I'm going to go around with my pearl white and I actually use my white signal pen to go around the black inside the black and you'll see why in a second and uh, yeah and you know what really makes coloring fun for me is layers layers and layers and layers and layers just experimenting even if it's the you know for a project you can still experiment and if you don't like it you just put water over top of it and pat it all out and you start out with a you know it won't be gone 
but it will be light enough that you can start forming something else. Now, here's one way of getting a fun look. If you're going for black lines and you're going to stick with that, on the corners, on the edges, just make it angular. Put a little angle in there uh, so it looks like it's sticking out. So I did the center line through the center of the igloo little parts. You will see I'll thicken them out and then I'll add little triangles to the edges where they meet. If I hope that makes sense. You can see it if looking at it just in the middle portion. So your eye is drawn to that. Then I'm going to take some iridescent white and I'm going to go over the edges. You know, it already has this white. Be mindful of that. It already has this kind of pearl white. You can get that by um, stepping outside of, you know, using pearl drops, putting that on the side and dipping into it, just so it has a little bit of shine to it from the sun. So it looks kissed by the sun. And you do see it's a different look than a direct stamp. Blacked out, blacked out, you know, by pressing that. I hope you see that and uh, you like it. This is just another way. And then thinking to yourself, okay, you know, just make the sun doesn't have to be precise on where it is coming in. Now, I am going to make some white strokes on the inside now this is just to show you, we're not using this one, I wanted to show you that you can get the look of ice blocks by adding white on the insides of the black pigment ink that you've drawn. And then when you go to color it, it will look more playful and not so uh, painterly, if that makes sense. And then you can go back and thicken it out and you get a different look. You just get a different look. And I was experimenting before I put this down. But because my lines on my little animals are not so pronounced, I decided to go with another uh, way of making an igloo, you know, experimenting. And I wanted to share that with you. So you can go like this. And then when you get to the tops, you can just angulate them and they'll look really sweet. So I'll show you how both of them look later on. Now we're going to change up. And it is fun to see how many brown tones you can get when you paint. You can use the same paints. You can mix the same mixture. Say it's like this chocolate brown. But you can add less water to get a rich look. Or you can add more water to the same uh, amount of color you've mixed up there to lighten it up. And I think that's wonderful. I love experimenting. And if you have the time, you know, you're not fixed to have a card ready for a certain occasion. This is fun to experiment like this and to make every animal different looking than the last one. And when you work with browns, like I say, yellow, orange, pinks look very nice as a sun tone looking down. So I'll let that dry. You know, it dries lighter. And I'll move on. Yeah, you can see. Oh, I liked this kind of gray brown I've got created here. And like a clay. It's really pretty. And uh, so I added some to one of the otters that's got his hands, you know, out. Woo, yeah, fun, fun. And I go back to all these to detail them later. I just want to make sure that every color brown is different. Each otter and every gray will be different. That's why I added the little otter on the three little friends there. I thought it made them stand out for one thing. And then when we go back to detail our otters, it'll be a lot of fun, a lot of fun. And you don't think you're gonna have a lot of fun on a small image. And they're not that small. You're looking at a couple of inches, you know, two and a half inches. So it's a nice, um, yeah, I'm just trying to see if I can dip into some paper towel there that's close by. So here's my 0 .03 pigment pen. I'm going to go over the images once they're dry. And you can see I just went out a little bit. That's all right. I'm going to go back to put some details in and uh, or thicken it out because he is going to be seated. So it's nothing wrong with seeing a thick edge on that portion. And uh, yeah, color in all the grays, adding some... Um, 
pearlescent white to his belly. And then that pearlescent white, when you add other colors to it, will still be prominent when you turn the card in different directions. You'll still have that little crisp um, sunlight look. So here we're going to, the little mama has his baby right there. So I thought I'd make the baby a little lighter. And now I'm adding some blue. You can see that it is going under the lines, but I'm going to pick that up with more water. There you go. And we're die cutting them. So I'm not too worried about the edges because if it dries a little dark, I'll add the signal white to pick it up. And when you die cut it, the edging is so thin, you don't even realize, you know, you had made a mistake there. And it's water, you know. So here we go. I probably stick him with my B0203, 4, and 5, 0, 02, 03, 04, and 05, the combo that we used at the beginning. Light and dark, and uh, yeah, I don't know what I'm trying to reach for there, but yeah, nice and fun process. Painting is a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Painting with paint brushes is nice too. So you're not always having to reach over and get water and clean the water and whatever. Uh, here I'm adding, you can see some brown tones to my little goldfish and picking it up there with the water brush, whatever leaks out. And uh, here's the, I left this in because this is the actual igloo I do use. I wanted it to be lighter. I wanted to have a light look to it. And, um, yeah, all you have to do on this one is to make the inside of the igloo a little darker. Keep your paper towels close by so you can tap, tap, tap and get the color out. And remember that your paints always dry lighter. So I'm going all over it with an iridescent white. You could, um, and, you know, if you have some um, pearl drops or anything that has a little in your spray bottles. Look and see if you have anything iridescent and set it beside you and dip it into your paint. And that's what I'm doing here. And I like the, this look of having a snow igloo. It just looks lighter. It doesn't jump off the page because you have a black outline. Nothing wrong with black outlines because it takes away from the realism. You're not going, if you're doing a face, you're not going to have black lines on it. It just isn't realistic. But when you're painting animals and coloring animals, it really does something nice to it to have the black lines or dark gray lines. So here comes my signal pen with the dots to get a little bit of contrast and a little bit of fur. I did the scarf there with some lines. You want to go back to the eyes and dot the eyes. So, and then we're going to put my scotch tape to hold down my dies to run through the machine. And uh, easy peasy, you know, we've worked with the Copics. We've, these have already dried. And now we have to just figure out which die goes with which otter and my little watermarks, and there it is. 3170 is the number of this die, and it is called Otterly Lovable. Yes, I'm grabbing a different uh, water brush here. For some reason, because I'm doing the voiceover much later, I did this card last week. I just had to find the time to edit and to do the voiceover. So here we go, all of them. I generally put it on black paper because I can see it. And oh yeah, look at that igloo. Ooh, yes, lovely, Carol, just lovely. I like this one. And there you have it. It just, uh, I like it. And I like the, it kind of, even though the inside of the igloo is darker, it looks like the sun is even in there, doesn't it? that it has that ray of sunshine on the inside. And I'm going over the sentiment, I'd be utterly lost without you. And I'm going to make it, put it on a stick. So it's out there and yeah. And then on the water, you'll see the difference. I do cut around and thin out some of the lines and add a little bit more blue to them. 
later on. I have to look at it the way it dried before I start to create. And isn't this something, an A2 size card? You won't see me do too many of these in my later tutorials. And it's not because they're not fun to do, it's just you don't have the space, right, to create anything large. So here I thought, okay, I'm going to cut around his arm so that his little otter arm sticks up and I can put the mug underneath his armpit there. Just tuck it right in, use some clear glue. And I told, I think I mentioned this, but this is the inexpensive clear glue, Elmer's. And it does not make your images wobble. They dry perfectly straight and I'm in love with it so far. I made my entire LDRS Creative album um, pages, not all of the pages, but the pages that I wanted to put one, uh, you know, layer to layer up. I tried the, the uh, Elmer's glue and I've looked every day to see if any of them have that wave to it and it doesn't. So I'm going to be using that more often because it's less expensive. So, and I saw that you can buy the big jug of it and refill your uh, smaller container. So that's affordable as well. So I made a bigger hill for behind there and this is when I thought okay interactive I thought I had the LDRS creative um, oh what did they call you know for making um, interactive cards by putting the pennies behind your image so it will slide down the opening but I didn't have it so I'm going to have to order that I absolutely love it and it goes all of these uh, interactive shapes go in different directions so it's very nice to have. Uh, check out the link. I think you'll love it. I haven't seen one like it and you get loads of them. But the affordability is wonderful. So um, that's always good. I put some black behind the image and I'm just taking out some of the oozing glue because I put too much on there and yes. I'm giving him his little toque. Isn't he cute? Um, yeah, so here we go. I have to figure out how much room I need for this little skier otter up there to go all the way down and not hit the lower one. So, yeah, let's draw it out. Just freehand, just freehand it because you know we have that Fiskars uh, fabric one right there. And look at, I mean, you do not have to go twice. That, that, this scars thing is so crazy sharp. You only have to go down once and it's cut. So all you have to do is be sure that you measure it. I could have taken a little saucer or something like that, a lid of some kind to make it straighter. But you know what? It's snow. I'm not going for perfection. It is snow. And I just want my little otter to ski down this hill. And I was thinking, should I put something behind it? And I thought against it. I thought, no, we all know that it is an interactive card. The person that will, you know, possibly get this card will know that, oh, it's got to do something. I see blue behind there. And he's skiing. How's he going to get down that hill and hit that igloo? Oh, I'll have a way. I'll have a way. I didn't go all the way down. You can see where I stopped. And we have our little otter family. I love the way the toque is on the middle little otter and then the... Um, the other hat is, you know, cute Christmas hat. So once again, I have to add, hmm, what am I going to do here? I think I'm just going to straighten it up a tad. No, I needed it bigger. I needed it bigger because the penny was showing. Yes, you don't want your penny showing there. So uh, too much. And you need enough uh, lift on it. That's why I used the little thin double-sided well, it's not tape, but the roll. Actually, they're strips. Excuse me. The dirty strips. All the links will be. I'll leave them for you. Now we have our penny, and I have to lift it up higher than the penny, right? So that the penny can roll up and down. When the person has this card, they can just tip the card side to side. So I decided on the scotch roll. I, I don't even know if I raised Yes, I did raise it up twice because I found the penny was still a little thick. And uh, I just think this guy is so cute because I made him little ski goggles. You have to have ski goggles or he'd have snow all over. 
and I experimented with three ways to make snow so I'll show you that you'll have um, you know three different products to get the look of snow when you heat set it and one you just dry it with your heat tool and it just looks like um, ice water kind of so to speak so here we go we're gonna raise it up again and I'm really pleased with these cards I really am I love the LDRS hybrid ink background here with the sunlight in the upper left corner here's my baby powder so nothing sticks my little skier is not gonna stick I made sure that I covered all of the tape and I did it before I took the tape off obviously <laughs> or it wouldn't stick to the page so remember that uh, put your baby powder on while you have the cover to your scotch double-sided tape now I don't have to worry about uh, each of them being high enough now you know the bottom one you're going to have thinner you know um, on the bottom end so this is what I did I made the top of that bottom hill thinner than the bottom so that it was even when I put it out there or vice versa the bottom was thicker and the top wasn't I can't remember what I just said <laughs> I'm losing it yes <sighs> and you can see that uh, that's why those you can see that my opening for my skier to come down is not necessarily as even uh, my eyesight was just not thinking even when I did that, but it doesn't bother me. Then why do you keep mentioning it, Carol? I don't know. It probably bothers me a teensy weensy bit, but I don't have those interactive LDRS creative dyes. So, um, yes, this is what I had to do, and that's why we are called creators. We just create something else if we don't have something at our, you know, at our convenience so to speak you just create on your own so now what is this going to look like let's see I need to cut out the inside here with my craft knife so that I can get the little fishy to be inside that little hole now this is what I was thinking okay this little otter is fishy but he's got a mug of hot chocolate so his mind is not on fishing so the fish are having a heyday. They are jumping out of the hole that he cut in the ice right there of our little lake. And they're going down to the hole beside the um, igloo. And they're just going up, down into the big hole, coming around, going up, and then coming out of his little hole while he's drinking his hot chocolate. It started to snow. And he's not even realizing that all of these fish are having a heyday. They're going, hey otter, uh, you don't even see, but you're not catching us because we're just having fun out here. And we're otterly uh, having a blast. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm thinking here. So that was why I did that. I thought, okay, this little fish is going to jump out of his hole. It's going to come around, jump down into the other hole and then swim over doo -doo -doo, and jump out of his hole all the while he's having his hot chocolate there under his little otter arm. Yes. So I wanted to use the boing boing thing, uh, the action wobble. So I, it was big enough, even though it was the smallest one, I put it under the three little otters. Now here's our gauge. You can stop it there, but it is the 0.25. 0 0.025 uh, and the gauge is 22 gauge so I grabbed some of my wire cutters and my jewelry making supplies just a few things one to hang on to it one to cut the wire very soft wire and I'm now looping it and you know twisting it and twisting it so that the the glasses will fit my little skier and you can eyeball that you don't have to measure that so I'm just thinking, oh, with acetate on the front of these little Googles, they'll look, you know, I shape them like a skier goggle. And then, uh, excuse me, oh, you're going to get poked with that, but he doesn't care. He doesn't care. He's just a free Roman dog. He just roams my craft room whenever he likes. He shows up. So now I'm twisting the center here. And you know what I did? 
I had the glasses made, but they were a little far apart. So I think I remember, if I remember right, I cut it off so that I could glue them and move them over. I'm pretty sure I did that. And I'm just making the arms on the glasses by twisting this uh, 22 gauge soft wire in silver. And I thought it was, uh, you know, it's that artistic wire that you get at the big box stores. I have it around for jewelry making. And I thought my little otter cannot be skiing without his goggles. He won't be able to see. Oh, my shattered nerves. Yes, I stopped everything to give him little goggles. And I was in love. No, that's not your skier, Carol. No, that's not your skier. But that's okay. I think I was just getting the distance because the two otters' heads look to be pretty well the same. So now I thought, well, maybe I should just put some uh, glue in between. And then I thought, no, you can't do that. You have to have the shape of a skier's goggle on the acetate. So while that was drying, this is what I did. I did the yellow tones and purple tones in the upper two corners, going like a triangle. Purples and blues in the center. Then I took out white acrylic paint and let it rest in two piles. And I'll tell you why. I wanted one dry. I wanted my acrylic paint dry. I took two black pieces of paper, whatever paper you have, to make rays of sun. I wanted sun rays coming down on this, and I'll tell you why. This is going to be our ocean scene right here. So I wanted to have the rays of sunshine go right down into the water and reflect off the water, okay? So now, so you have it, I divided it into an, a triangle, put the colors in the upper, right and left hand corners. Then I wanted to distinctly see the rays coming out of the sky. So you get this effect just by having two sheets of paper, as you can see. And I made four or five of them. I can't remember here, probably the four. And you could do this with trees as well. If you had large birch trees in a, in a forest, you could do it like this, make them larger and going smaller towards the top. But for me right here, um, oh yeah, I thought I was going to light it up with white, but I said, forget that. I will just cream out the inside portions here before I get to my acrylic white paint. And that's what I did with the LDRS. I just lightened the top portions up because I knew the bottom is going to be water. Beautiful ripples of ocean water. So here we go, just tap, tap, tap. Add some on there, lighten up the blues, lighten up the yellows, especially on the top to kind of cloud it out so there was like clouds. Very easy to do. Here's my white acrylic paint. My one inch paintbrush, you want to go over it all. Just cover it all up, cover it all up. Then have a little bit of your white acrylic paint right there on the side drying so that I could have some gooby marks. See them on there? They just stuck to the page because they dried thicker so it gave me like snow that snow effect because it ended up globbing and I like that and then tap the top of your paintbrush down just tap it on leave it heat set it so that those little um, uh, marks would dry and you would have snow like that like that snow look uh, it obviously isn't snow because it's sun rays but you get that you'll see it at the end how cute it looks. I'm going to heat set it because I want to move on and I'm just seeing how much space I need. Now I add my water direct to paper, blue mini LDRS Creative mini inks and I'm going to just take your blue, whatever blue you like. Here I wanted a darker blue and I didn't have it in my minis. I, I don't have as many minis as I have the larger LDRS Creative inks. I'm going to put my little otters out there to see what I, you know, how far up I want to make my waves. And there you have it. Isn't that cute? You can see the water line. It's a third of the way up. You want to work in thirds, the rule of thirds when you're painting. Try to. I'm once again going to add a little bit more of the ink. And LDRS Creative Hybrid inks clean off great. So here we go. This is dollar store white acrylic paint right out of the tub. Just, you know, at, use your 
older paint brushes that you have, you get some use, add some blue ink in two different shades with whatever you want to use here. I'm using the soft brushes to get the darkness in so it looks like these waves are rolling in and then you can make the bottom one because it's closer to you brighter white. Whatever's coming close to you make it bright white and you can see the rays of the sun are coming down and poking through the ocean there, my Pacific Ocean. I love it. I love the way we covered it. I took a baby wipe to clean it off. When you saw me cleaning it off it was with a wet baby wipe. And then I'll add more with the one inch paintbrush, however you like it. You can see the difference here. Here's the one card of this is my lake, you know, my lake card with my lake otters. And then there's my Pacific Ocean otters on the other card. And there's the boing boing. And let's see how I made this snow all the way around the sentiment there. There's his glasses. I just stopped the video there and you can see his glasses. You'll be able to see the little ski goggles better when you view the pictures and then you can stop. I'm sorry I had the keyboard there. I didn't even notice I did. Here I am just placing it on the right otter. <laughs> Actually it's the left otter. Aren't those glasses cute? And you can see that I put the wave in the top of the glass so it looked like actual goggles instead of glasses. You know, had that look. There they are, so crazy cute. I mean, he's skiing, right? And the other fishes are having a heyday. I absolutely love my igloo. I think it does look like ice. I did cover it with some of, I'll tell you what the name of the products are on the links on my blog if you're interested. And I like the snow, the way it poofs out on top of the sentiment up there and on the hills and underneath the, don't forget to put shadow there underneath the three little otters standing there just watching those fish and having a tee hee hee watching them go from one opening to the other opening and there I'm just gluing it down and letting it dry then I'll add two little black eyes there we go I just had to take a little bit off the end but I still wanted it to look like they are twisted in to look like goggles I mean he has to twist around his ears up there these are the little things I love 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 to do with that I was able to shorten it down to 58 minutes just by taking out a few little things that's no need to see so uh, like I said said like I say <laughs> there's my little eyeballs I'm putting on my goggles like I said, don't forget to put some little gray tones underneath all your images because on snow, it does have, um, you know, it does have a shadow. That's the word I'm looking for. Under the three little guys that shake, you can see the shadow uh, everywhere. Just add a little gray and I'm picking up, see the wet snow there and there he goes with his little penny down the hill. I kind of like the idea of having it not so straight and not so right, you know, detailed right on. The hole that the penny goes up and down through doesn't bother me. I, it actually, the bottom portion looks like a hill. So that's pretty awesome. Now that I'm looking at it, I'm thinking, wow, that doesn't look bad. So just freehand yourself that opening so you can have an interactive card. I love, love, love this card that we're working on. How simple was that? A little bit of acrylic paint, a little bit of sun rays coming through, uh, one of your older paint brushes that you don't mind just sticking it right in some dollar store where nothing's a dollar acrylic paint and just, you know, circling all the way from one side to the other, making yourself some nice foamy waves. You know I always add white cardstock to the inside, wherever. I'll just tell you this. On the inside, outside portion, I put another layer of cardstock so it was thicker. So now I'm trying to think of the, you know, I didn't show you that I had put this down, but I wanted to, okay, you know, this was just too much on the bottom. It was just making it totally lopsided. Didn't look right. It looks like, you know, it's too heavy on the bottom. 
So I liked it right there. I like the fact that the skis hid behind my three little otters. I put the boing boing underneath there and here's the little bit of water. I can't stop playing with it. I do that on all my tutorials when I have interactive things, don't I? Then you can add a little bit of pink and blue underneath your water so you get the reflection off the water onto the white cardstock if you want. I didn't, oh there, see he's going back in. It's kind of like a, a round circle. They're, they're jumping out and going around, jumping in and oh yeah, so much fun, so much fun. And uh, even though the base of it is smaller than I'm usually uh, working with, that uh, it still was a lot of fun for me. So here you go. Uh, I'd be utterly lost without you. I put it there. There was nowhere else really to put it. Then I had to decide, okay, where am I going to put my water? Oh, look at him. I love him peeking out of the, um, out of the bottom there. The next thing we need to do is you get snow on there. This one is made by Marvy. It's just called Snow Marker. The next one is Liquid Applique. We're all familiar with this one. It heats up. And then there's the Texture Gems by Faber-Castell. One is more liquidy, and which is the, the one by Faber-Castell, the Texture Gems. It is more for a wet look. But I went with the uh, Snow Marker. By Marvy and I tell you what two seconds it puffs up and it does not flake off and it does not uh, work its way down flat it stays nice and puffy so this is going to be my base for my images to rest on just a little bit of snow here and there you can't have it plain you need to seat it on something I put a little bit underneath my three little otters and uh, then on top of the sign, and then I just made little blink, 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 blink in the air there to look like snow was falling. Because where would the snow come from? If I have it on everything, I need to have snowing. I need to have it snowing. <laughs> Isn't this the cutest little stamp set and die you've ever seen? The background, I love it. I just love it. I love everything about this set. And I like the fact that we have a skier going down the hill. Here I'm making everything look wet. I'm just squeezing it out, it dries. I put it on top of the igloo, on the fish, on the water, and then I'll put it on the hill so it glistens. And we have ourselves, yeah, look at them. Yoop, yoop, boing, 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 yoop. And there you have it. You could add some glitter to the texture gems if you wanted to. Now I'm going to add uh, the front and the back, as you can see, I got a boo-boo on the back, but I will put white cardstock on the back and I'll put it on the bottom. I'm going to next get my glasses situated for my little ski rider. There it is. I'm adding the inside, I'm adding some of the texture gems so that it shines. Then on the outside of the acetate, I'll put two little black eyeballs. And this is really cute. I like the way it looks like real glasses with glasses with the acetate going straight across the top of the lens. Oh yeah. And now we're just going to add our liquid Elmer's glue and seat it on the front and the back of both cards because you know I like my cards thick. I did not put anything on the inside of the outside because that's where I want to put, you know, whether it's a birthday card or whatever sentiment I want to put in there. So here I am just seating it underneath the fold, you know, so it doesn't get in the way. I'm going to let that dry. I think it's very comfortable. Yes, put something over top so that if there's any oozing glue, you can catch it with your baby wipe and clean it up for your paper towel. And I am super, super happy with the creation of these two cards with Eldera's creative dies and stamps. This is the Otterly Lovable release from the release. Uh, please go to the link and check it out. There's our scene with uh, the Pacific Ocean. Oh yeah, look at those waves coming in, the sunlight. This is an easy peasy project, my friends, to do an ocean card. As you can see, you just need a one inch brush, some acrylic paint, 
uh, some beautiful hybrid LDRS creative inks to put the sun rays, let them go all the way to the bottom. And you saw me create it. It literally did not take long at all. And I'm super happy with it. Thank you as always for enjoying the process with me. I do appreciate that. I'm going to put some black cardstock behind it so that it just stands off the page. I'm going to get my little otters. Where'd you go, otters? And we're going to place them in the ocean. And you always learn something new, don't you, about car, uh, stamp sets and images that you use. I learned a little bit about otters. And uh, that was enjoyable to know that they're really in fresh water, you know, fresh lakes. And the Pacific Ocean. So I did one that portrayed the fresh lakes with them skiing. And I did one right here with the Pacific Ocean. And these were the leftover pieces. So you, you know, you create a card with whatever's left over. And I love the way this little otter has his little mug sticking out. And that's not his face. It's an actual mug. Yeah, I was going to have him hold this with his little uh, mitt there. But I thought, uh, hmm, I wonder if that's what I did. <laughs> I think I did stick with that. Then I put the majority of them, I did put it flat. I got to use that little iceberg with the water on the outside. I did put some of the texture gems that's from Faber-Castell on it. Here I'm lifting up the actual sentiment with my otter. So I did use them. I just cut under the armpit. The armpit of the otter. That could be a book, couldn't it? The armpit of the otter. Thank you so much for joining me in my craft room today. I always enjoy your company. I enjoy hearing from you. And let me know what you do with your LDRS Creative Stamps and Dies. Check out the store. I know you will love everything. And over on my blog, I left direct links to all the clearance products as well. And you know, I always tell you this, when Angie Hunt says clearance, she means clearance. And this new collection for Christmas it does need to be in your stash. You will love using every single product. Just had a blast with you. I loved creating these cards. Here's my Pacific Ocean and then I did my beautiful northern lake for you with our skiing otter. So you have yourself a blessed week. Check out the store. There you have it. Enjoy the pictures. And I will see you on the next project. Take care.